Welcome to the Credential Registry Badge Publisher Unlocking the Power of Open Badges webinar. We are so excited to see all of you joining us today and to introduce this new tool to all of you. I am Jeannie Kitchens, Chief Technology Services Officer with Credential Engine. I am joined today by Deborah Everhart, our Chief Strategy Officer at Credential Engine, Nate Otto, founder of Skybridge Skills, and also by Cadence Colexto and Devin, <clears throat> where did Devin go? Devin Peelman <laughs> with the Credential Engine team as well. They'll be helping out with covering the chat and sharing links with everyone. Go ahead. Our topics today are CTDL unlocks the power of open badges. We're gonna provide an introduction to the new Credential Registry Badge Publisher tool. You will see a demonstration. We'll have time for questions and answers and we'll go over how you can immediately get started using this new tool. <clears throat> Before we get into that content, just a reminder about Credential Engine who we are and what we do. We are a nonprofit with a mission to map the credential landscape with clear and consistent information. <clears throat> and we do this through building um, lasting partnerships and collaborations. And we also do this through building common infrastructure that is open for anyone to use. So that's what we're gonna focus on today is our open infrastructure. And we can go ahead and go to the next slide. <clears throat> For those of you who may not be familiar with the credential engine's infrastructure, it's all founded on the credential transparency description language. We're going to learn more about that today when we delve into this new tool. And we also provide an openly accessible suite of publishing tools that are for the purpose of converting information into CTDL linked open data. That data gets published to the credential registry for collecting and connecting. Um, the CTDL as a linked open data graph and making that data available to other systems, tools, and applications to consume to power ecosystems. Go ahead. The CTDL is a large description language, oops, <laughs> modeled on the semantic web for transparency, comparability, and interoperability. It is composed of three schemas that all integrate together. And on the right, what we see is a picture showing the depth and breadth of the CTDL with those arrows giving an idea of how it enables rich connections between this data. And that is going to be an important opening for our badge publisher. So we can go ahead and go to the next. We would like to begin by showing you a very short two minute, 31 second video. Digital badges are a powerful way to recognize a person's achievements. Their use continues to grow with 430,000 badges offered in the U.S and more than 74 million badges issued to people globally. That's a lot of badges. Unfortunately, badges are often undervalued because people don't understand what they mean or how they can unlock opportunities. Badges can represent degrees, micro-credentials, licenses, certifications, skills, and more. But badges often don't provide the transparent information that helps people use them to achieve their goals and employers don't get the full benefits of using badges to verify what a person knows and can do, so people miss out on opportunities. We can unlock the power of badges by including clear, transparent data to communicate what the badge means. The Credential Transparency Description Language, or CTDL, provides meaningful information inside the badge so that its value is explicitly stated and fully defined benefiting both badge holders and employers. Transparency is key to achieving this value and unlocking opportunities benefiting everyone. To make it easier to use CTDL with badges, Credential Engine's Badge Publisher tool helps badge creators import badges to the Credential Registry and then link to CTDL from inside the badges. Badge creators can log in to Credential Engine's account system, select your badges, import the badges, and edit the information using CTDL 
and approve your badges for publishing in the Credential Registry. Link to rich CTDL information from inside your badges using a simple link. The CTDL linked data is human and machine readable so that people and systems can understand the meaning and value of the badge, its connections to other credentials, and its pathways to opportunities. The Badge Publisher tool unlocks the power of badges by combining the wide use of badges with the benefits of CTDL. That's a powerful combination that can light up the best pathways forward for everyone. Use CTDL to unlock the power of your badges. Hey everyone, um, let's go to the next slide. I am super proud to help introduce you to the badge publisher today and the value that this unlocks. There are a lot of badges out there, over 430,000 just in the US and you know over 74 million that have been issued globally and we're pretty sure that's an undercount. So, but what are people doing with them? Open badges can be a powerful and increasingly ubiquitous digital credentialing technology, and that can empower people with a better understanding of their own skills and achievements. But unfortunately, as we know, in a lot of cases, people just don't understand what badges mean. And so then the people who hold those badges don't get the real value out of them. And so this powerful combination that we're introducing here today is that between open badges and CTDL, because CTDL provides that clear structure for the meaning of the badges. It connects and contextualizes them with information about skills, jobs, pathways, and more. And this badge publisher makes it easier to do that. This has always been possible, but the badge publisher makes it easy and we hope makes it a ubiquitous practice. The next slide is about putting people in the center. The next slide, um, because people, badges become valuable when people can use them to visualize their own achievements and apply those achievements to reach their goals. And badges support digital credentialing processes that enable these clear records of lifelong learning. That includes many different types of credentials degrees, diplomas, certifications, micro-credentials, and skills from many different providers so that across this lifetime learning cycle, people can discover those credentials that are valuable for them, engage in those relevant education and training programs, achieve their own skills documented in badges where they can see what they've achieved so that they can share those achievements, but to do that in a common data structure and that can provide the matches between skills and jobs in order to get a job, get a better job, continuously learn and advance. On the next slide, we see this more like a workflow across that lifelong learning where people are gonna earn their badges from many different um, types of credentialing organizations, including on the job and community activities, as well as education and training providers. And so it's critical that these many different credentials not only use the open badge standard, but also CTDL so they can be understood and connected because those badges do become valuable when they can communicate clear, actionable, relevant information as open CTDL. Then the badges can be meaningful. So they'll have rich information about those credentials. Um, they can be interoperable, so they can be read and interpreted across different types of systems and different types of processes, and it's actionable so that both people and systems can do useful things with them, so that people can be empowered, because the CTDL is both human and machine readable to enable those opportunities. Then learners, workers, educators, employers, everyone can get that context they need to make informed decisions about at about navigating their education and career pathways. The next slide is a little bit more technical, um, but it's, I'm gonna let Jeannie and Nate dig into the actual technical specifics. Um, but this diagram lets you see how it all fits together. So the in the middle, you see the credential and skill data in CTDL in the registry. And that can be not only stored in the registry, but also used in other systems. 
or even across a network of registry structures. And the credentialing organizations like the educators and certification bodies, they publish their own credential and skill data to the registry. Simultaneously, quality assurance providers can um, publish information about their quality reviews of providers and credentials. Employers can publish information about their own organizations and the credentials and skills they endorse and even link them to their job roles. And so that contextualizes in the bottom left, you see the individuals who are the people who earn those credentials and they are, and the badges are issued to them. So the credential registry does not collect or track information about individuals or the credentials that have been issued to them, but the connection between the issued credentials and the credential registry is that the badges issued to an individual can include CTDL and links to the globally unique identifiers, those CTIDs, of these credentials and skills in the registry. And then people, systems, apps, web tools, they can all use those identifiers to link back to the full set of data about the badge, the badge issuer, the skills, the quality assurance, the pathways, the occupational alignments, all of that is in the graph data of CTDL. So that's how all the pieces fit together at a high level. And I'm gonna let Jamie and Nate take you through the specifics. Thanks. Yeah, yeah let's take a look. Um... Uh, we'll take a little more depth of an introduction to the badge publisher tool. The first important thing to know, I think if there's one more click, is to, it's directly integrated with the credential registry accounts and publishing system. So that means that anyone that has a free credential engine account can use this tool effective now. Let me go ahead and go to the next slide. <clears throat> uh, overall, the tool works in three easy steps. First, it's going to map the metadata of open badges to the CTDL and prepare it for importing to the credential registry publishing system. It then allows you to edit that information and customize alignments in, as the CTDL, and uh, Nate is going to demonstrate that momentarily. Finally, you basically just save that information and publish it to the credential registry. Um, as a bonus, the tool will give you back their credential registry alignment that you can save on the badging platform. And I believe Nate will show you that as well. Um, <clears throat> what it doesn't do, which is really important, and Deb mentioned this as well, is it's not for issuing badges to people. It doesn't retrieve the issued, issued badge. And the credential registry is not for personally identifiable information. So this is the descriptions of your badges that are very valuable to individuals who have either already earned those badges or will in the future. And we can go to the next slide. <clears throat> so uh, currently there are two direct integrations with the credential registry badge publishing tool, Canvas and Credly. And if you're not a Canvas user or a Credly user, you can copy paste JSON from another badging platform. But those are currently the two direct integrations that you'll see uh, in the demonstration today. Also, um, there's open source code. This code is available under an Apache 2.0 license. So if anyone in this webinar today is with a badging platform and you want to integrate this directly, it is available um, for that purpose as well. So we wanted to cover the basis there too. <clears throat> the users, this tool is meant for um, staff members with organizations that offer badges. Um, so I am curious to know how many of you um, in the audience today are with an organization that offers badges. If you could just put like a plus one in the chat or um, a thumbs up or something just to let us know. <clears throat> the, that is who the, the tool is intended for. And of course, as I just mentioned, other badging platforms can integrate this tool into their platform as well. So the users would be those um, staff members with an organization that if you use Canvas credentials have the login to the administrator account for creating your badges. 
For Credly, you do not have to log in, but it should be those users should be familiar with the badges that your organization offers. And if you don't use Canvas or Credly and you use another platform, but you can access the JSON um, from your Open Badge platform, then you can you you'll um, see Nate will show you how you can copy paste that in as well, and you would just need access to that JSON. And we can go ahead. <clears throat> so um, this is this is and, and Nate's going to show you in more detail what this is actually going to look like with the demonstration. But what you're seeing here on the right is a screenshot of of the um, badge publisher tool. And what you're seeing here on the left is a listing of all the type of open badge data that maps to the CTDL and you can import and publish to the registry. And in summary, this item, this list of one to 12 <clears throat> is all of the data that can be included in a badge, in an open badge uh, based on that specification. So in summary, you can import all of the data about your badge that follows the open badge specification. You could, it is mapped to the CTDL by this tool automatically, and you can publish it to the registry. <clears throat> Um, and I also mentioned that <clears throat> the tool will give you back the alignment to the data in the registry. And it's really great to um, save that with your badges. With the Canvas platform, um, that will, you can just click save. You're seeing a screenshot here on the right where um, with the badges I created, I was able to save my credential registry alignments back to my badge automatically by clicking save all alignments. And that is a direct mapping to the badge um, specification that you see on the left there. So that is a super important added bonus. <clears throat> There's kind of two routes to publishing. Um, the first route automatically includes all of the um, <clears throat> open badge fields um, that you see listed on the left here the name, the description, the image, criteria description, criteria URL, and tags. And it also adds CTDL terms. And that is absolutely effortless. All you have to do is select import and save all your badges and click approve and publish. Um, but what we're going to recommend on the next slide is the second route. <clears throat> And that route automatically includes everything that was on that prior slide that I just described, but it also gives you the opportunity to include um, your alignments. So those of you who know the open badge spec or you're participating because you offer open badges, you know that you can add alignments. And on the right, it shows a listing of what those fields include. The thing about those alignments with an open badge is they could be anything. And so what we do with this tool is we offer you the ability through a very simple to use dropdown that Nate will show you in just a moment, the ability to map those um, to the CTDL to give them some important contextualization. <clears throat> so what you're seeing now is a screenshot of what that dropdown tool looks like for alignments. So if, if your badges include alignments, it will bring all those alignments in. And you simply use a dropdown and you select the appropriate alignment. And on the left-hand side of your screen here, we can see a list of what is currently supported. So assessments, competencies, courses, credentials, learning programs, learning opportunity profile, occupation, occupation classification, and quality assurance, um, <clears throat> credential organization um, <clears throat> are all supported through these alignments. And over time, if we see um, that additional alignments are needed, we can look at adding those as well. So <clears throat> following this webinar, you'll be able to access detailed instructions. Um, there are instructions for getting started. There are instructions for using Canvas or instructions for using Credly because they're used slightly differently. So it's going to be really important to use the correct instructions. And there's instructions for that JSON copy and 
And without further ado, I would like to turn it over to Nate to provide a demonstration. All right, thanks, Jeannie. Uh, Nate Otto here, founder of Skybridge Skills. I am the full stack developer that built this uh, badge publishing tool. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit about the tool and, and maybe a couple nerdy details for developers first. Um, this is a piece of software written in um, TypeScript with the SvelteKit framework. Uh, we are going to see it demonstrated today, integrated with the Credential Engine's um, publishing system. So it's deployed as part of the Credential Engine um, website cluster of applications, and you can use it there. That's definitely how most of us on the webinar will use it. But it is also available open source and usable as a standalone tool running on your own desktop computer or potentially deployed to a different um, website. And as uh, Jeannie and Deb mentioned, um, other badge platforms, if they wish to enable CTDL publication directly from their platform, are welcome to take uh, this code in whole or in part and integrate it with uh, with their systems so that you don't even need to go to the Credential Engine um, publishing site to uh, get started with the tool. Um, I'm going to share a little screen share um, showing us walking through the process that uh, Jeannie just described. Uh, a lot of what you're going to see is uh, pretty similar because you just saw all the screenshots. So as I mentioned, the tool is integrated with the credential registry publication system. Um, so I'm here in the sandbox environment um, of the publisher. I'm signed into my account. And within the tools menu, I can see an option here for the badge publisher. So I'll go ahead and select that. It opens in a new window. And because I'm already signed into my um, account in the publisher, I was immediately authenticated here within the um, badge publisher. Uh, tool. I can see the organizations that I am a member of uh, within this credential engine environment. This is the sandbox, so it's all test data, um, but on production, um, there would be you know real organizations or rep uh, that are yours um, represented. Just sign up for a free account and uh, talk with the credential engine staff to get your org uh, up and running. I'm going to choose the organization for my company, Skybridge Skills, and move on to the next step. We've validated that connection and see that there's already 29 credentials um, that are saved to this organization. As we mentioned, there are three different options for the source of the badges. You can integrate directly with um, Canvas, we can um, pull badges directly from Credly, or you can paste badges in um, open badges format uh, in JSON. Um, we'll talk a little bit about that in a moment, but let's uh, take a look at Credly first. Um, Credly does not require users to be signed in, as uh, Jeannie mentioned, but you do need to know which organization you um, represent on Credly, and um, the way to do that is to copy and paste the URL of your organization page um, from Credly right into the tool. And so just go to the URL bar, go to this um, public page that shows all the badges uh, that you issue, grab that URL, and uh, paste it here. Um, this tool is only for use by the representatives of this particular organization. We won't go all the way to publishing this data um, here because I'm not a representative of the Credly demo org, uh, but we can go ahead and prove that the uh, data is pulled in and you can see the list of um, badges that are uh, defined on that issuer where you can select which ones you want to import in today's session. I'm going to go back and show the other options next. And let's go to the advanced uh, JSON option, and then we'll round it out with Canvas in a minute. Uh, as marked as advanced, this is a little likely to be used more by developers, um, but most uh, users um, have the ability to um, grab data in this format. So I saw a couple of people in the chat asking about other badge platforms that do support the Open Badges standard. All you need to do is, within that platform, go figure out how you can get the data in JSON, and then you can just uh, download it, copy it into this um, text entry field here. Um, here's a badge that's defined on the Canvas Badges platform. And even though I'll show you in a minute the direct integration with Canvas, uh, I'm going to show you the Paste JSON option now. Within that product, there is a View JSON button. And I can see all of the Open Badges code for this particular badge that I can copy to my clipboard. And then I can go back into the tool and paste it here, mark for import. And indeed, it has validated the tool and seen that there is one badge in the data that I pasted. You could also paste an array of, of many badges that you might assemble that array um, through some method uh, particular to your system. But 
Nevertheless, you can get that data in there. This tool can be used to post open badges to the registry from any um, open badges compatible source that uses either the 2.0 version of the spec or the forthcoming 3.0 version. This is a future looking tool already. But let's uh, get to the fun stuff and go further into the process with Canvas credentials. Canvas credentials, also known as Canvas badges, um, is offered by the Instructor uh, company. It was formerly known as Badger. Uh, it's, it's one of the leading um, platforms in the market, and they are deployed around the world. So there are four different production uh, environments for Canvas credentials. Uh, your organization, you probably know which um, of these uh, data centers your badge system is located in. Um, if you aren't sure, it's probably the United States one, but if you're calling in from Europe, you probably had your, your team set, set up your account in Europe. So just make sure you choose the right one. Today, I'm actually going to be using the test um, Badger or test uh, Canvas credentials environment. Um, and this test environment is only available for use within the credential engine sandbox. It's disabled in um, the other places, so you won't get confused. You'll choose the environment where your badges are. But I'll go ahead and make sure I agree with the terms of service. And then what we're going to see is authentication with Canvas. I'm already signed into my um, Canvas account, and I've already approved this application for um, access. So I'm, I'm not sure if I'm going to see the authorization screen. But what I'll do next is I'll click this Login with Canvas button. And I'm going to be redirected over to the Canvas credentials application, where if I hadn't already previously authorized the connection, I would be asked to authorize the um, credential publisher and then I'll get redirected right back here. All right, there we go. All right, indeed, I got redirected over to Canvas and then almost as fast as you could see, redirected back where this application has now obtained an API access token and is ready to load data directly from Canvas credentials. So I'll go ahead and click that load issuers button. And I see a number of different issuers that I am a staff member on in this uh, Canvas environment. Most people are typically only a staff member on one or two issuers, but I've got a lot of test data. The issuer that we're gonna be working with today is the credential engine test issuer. I saw a question in the chat of whether you can import badges from multiple different issuers, as long as they all represent the same destination organization within the credential publisher. Yes, you can do that, but do it in successive sessions of running through this tool to keep it simple. One issuer's data at a time will be selected. We have three badges defined on this um, test issuer, uh, Cooking Basics, Desert Landscape, Landscape Specialist Badge, and Workplace Skills. I'll select all three of them to get uh, started with. I'm going to click Finish uh, Badge Publication, and so it's loading data from the publisher and the badge system. I have one of these badges previously published to my account in the publisher, and so this tool intelligently can manage both the publication of new badges to the registry publisher system, but also can handle updates um, for those badges that you previously published as intelligently as possible, remembering the settings that you chose in previous sessions so that you don't have to do that work again or potentially make mistakes, making different decisions about the CTDL mapping of the data. We'll take a look at each of these badges and see how the open badges metadata translated over to um, the values in the registry. We can see that um, each badge has a name, a description, and then a credential type. This credential type defaults to open badge, but um, if you are issuing a badge that represents one of the many other credential subtypes that is described in CTDL, you can get more specific by choosing um, which of these uh, credential subtypes best represents the concept that um, this badge recognizes. There's a criteria web page potentially, and then detailed criteria in the narrative um, field. Th this text might be longer if you had uh, a more complicated badge. And then uh, keyword or open badges tags are mapped to CTDL keywords, and um, a language is applied, uh, one or more languages, and you can enter um, additional um, values as needed. The alignment editor. Uh, Jeannie spent a lot of time talking about, and so we'll we'll take a look at it uh, here in the live demo. We have three or four alignments, uh, three three alignments for this badge. In open badges, alignments can mean a lot of different things, and CTDL gives you the ability to be much more specific about uh, what these each of these alignments actually means in practice. And so, 
there are a bunch of different choices that I can make here for what is the resource type uh, for each of these alignments and then what is the connection type. Um, when I select that this first alignment to um, competencies is a competency, then the connection type available uh, narrows down to just that one that is um, makes sense for competency, which is requires. And the tool is clear about what's happening. This credential requires the completion of the identified um, resource, this competency. Um, I'll do that again with the um, this particular recipe, which we'll call a learning opportunity um, that this credential will provide preparation for. And we'll do the same with the second recipe here, another learning opportunity that this credential is preparation for. Once you know about green beans, you can cook these two delicious recipes from the New York Times. So we'll go ahead and finish editing that first credential. And now you can see all of the alignments are mapped to those specific types. And I have some unmapped alignments in these other two credentials. Take a look at the workplace skills one next, where looks like what happened here is we've added a new alignment since we last published this badge to the registry. So all those other settings are uh, remembered from what we previously described, but the new alignment here is unmapped and we need to um, choose a uh, specific connection type. And so we'll say this is a co-prerequisite course that um, represents this alignment. So we'll finish editing that one, leaving this one with 13 alignments. Now, 13 alignments is a lot to edit. So let's see if there's any common patterns here that um, can be represented across those alignments. And maybe we can um, make our job go a little bit faster. So I'm seeing here that we have an occupation type um, represented with a ONET code. And uh, so we'll align that one. And then I'm seeing a bunch of competencies related to the, um, the badge here. So I'll leave the competencies alone for now, but select QA credential um, organization for this uh, organization that is recognizing the credential. And then here we have a job that we can mark as an op uh, occupation that this uh, credential is preparation for. Um, a learning program, call that a learning opportunity that this is preparation for as well. And another one like that. All right, a certificate is a, a type of credential. So we'll specify a credential and we'll say that um, this credential is recommended for the Advanced Desert Landscaping Certificate. And when you select credential, you do have to select the subtype of credential um, that you're pointing to within the CTDL. So we can say that this is a certificate uh, as that subtype. All right, now we're down to just a few um, learning opportunities and um, competencies and assessments. So uh, an assessment is marked as an assessment profile, say it's required. So I've saved a bunch of them um, custom, leaving just the competencies unmapped. And I wanted to show off one more feature of the alignment tool is when you have a lot of alignments that represent the, the a certain pattern, you can actually set defaults for those um, across the entire set of badges that you're working on. So I can say that these are all competencies and now all those um, unmapped alignments have been mapped as uh, competencies by default, saving me a little bit of time. So I'm ready to publish these three badges, uh, including the update and the two new badges to the registry. So I'll proceed to the next step and we'll get that going. I can click save one at a time where we uh, see the tool work in the background and complete, or I can click save all and it will successively save each of the credentials. I'll sit here and watch it work, and then we can view our results. All right, success on all three publications, the one update and the two new credentials. So I'm gonna go ahead and view the results in the registry. Click that view credential button, and I can see um, in the publishing system, here is the draft of the credential. It's still not published to the public registry. Um, and so as Jeannie said earlier, this is ready to go to be approved by the admin of my organization in the uh, publishing system. And then uh, once approved, this can be available to everyone to look at in uh, credentialfinder.org.
as well as via API from the credential registry. So we're almost done here. Um, and I'll go ahead and click that finish publication button. Um, we've saved all the data we want to the publisher side. And now the only thing left is to provide some additional information for the users of our badge system by linking to this published data back in those original badges. So um, Jeannie mentioned this in her slides and showed an alignment to the credential finder where someone looking at this badge back in Canvas will be able to see a link to the, um, the finder where they can get more information about all of those uh, CTDL mappings that we made. So I'll go ahead and um, save either one at a time or all to Canvas. And indeed, now those are all saved. My work is done, uh, badge import complete. I can continue in the publisher where I see these credentials among all others for my organization ready for approval and publishing. So now we went from 29 credentials up to 31 on this organization, seeing these um, badges that we just posted, workplace skills, desert landscape, specialist badge, and cooking basics. So that's uh, the demo of this tool. I hope you find it uh, easy to use, flexible, and powerful for um, mapping your badge data to CTDL, getting them in front of the world so that your credential program can be better understood, easier to find, and more powerful for employers to consider when they're looking at hiring decisions. Thank you. Nate, that was a great demonstration. We got a couple of questions in the chat. I'm going to go to the first question um, for the <clears throat> um, the question from Don. He was the first one to put a question in that I wanted to save for you. If you don't mind going back to the deck, we can just land on the Q and A slide, and then we'll proceed on at the end of the webinar to the closing. Awesome. And Don asked, <clears throat> plain text only or rich text and embedded media? I think I noted the answer to that, Nate, but I wanted to wait for uh, to get an answer from you. Sure. Yeah. So this tool works with the Open Badges 2.0 or 3.0 standards. And so any data that is expressed within those standards can be mapped over to CTDL where there's a mapping that makes sense. There's a little bit of, uh, of a gap. Maybe there's possible data you could express in OB that's not yet mapped in CTDL, but um, as there are significant advances and data that needs that mapping, this tool can be improved over time. Um, as far as rich text, there are a couple places in an open badge that support rich text, um, including the criteria narrative. Um, CTDL does not support mar markdown, which is the syntax for that field. So this tool intelligently um, converts the um, markdown formatting from a criteria narrative field into plain text preserving line breaks. So it still is a pretty good presentation of that text, but it does, no longer has um, rich formatting um, with uh, you know bulleted lists and such. It just breaks them out into new lines. Thanks for that answer. <clears throat> I'll take the next question from Wayne. As a use case from a pathway perspective, can I be told in the registry all the badges required for a particular pathway? Um, you, you cannot be told in the registry all the badges required for the particular pathway. However, <laughs> um, we're going to be launching our um, pathway builder tool in July. So stay tuned for that webinar and you can learn more about how you can use the CTDL and build pathways that include badges. Um, and let's see, Anissa. We do our certificates of completion as pathways and Canvas credentials with badges for each required course leading to the pathway completion. Is it recommended to include the original individual courses in Credential Engine as well, or just the final pathway certificates? Well, Anisa, of course, we would advocate for rich data and recommend that you include your courses and you know, take advantage of all that linking in the registry, publish your badges, link them to the registry courses, and um, <clears throat> that really enriches the data and helps, you know, people find those paths um, and understand what the requirements are um, for those badges. And let's see, we would like to open it up to other questions. What other questions do you have? Feel free to raise your hand if you would like to unmute 
or you can continue to drop questions in the chat. We'll give everyone another minute. And if we don't have additional questions, then we can go ahead and go on to the next slide. All right. <clears throat> Um, the tool, the, the Credential Registry Badge Publisher tool will um, is available now. So right after this webinar, if you don't already have a Credential Engine account and you your organization offers badges, you can set up your account and you can begin using this tool in the three ways that we described you with the direct in integration with Credly, with Canvas, or uh, copy pasting the JSON. The open source code is available for badging platforms to use as well. The repo is open and ready for your use. Um, <clears throat> instructions are available. There's a getting started instruction, and then there's individual instructions for each type of integration that we talked about, um, and a web page that's available where you will find the video and all of this information in one place. After the webinar, as we always do, we will send an email out to everyone who registered for this webinar, um, and we'll make sure that you get the recording, but that will also be posted um, on our YouTube channel and our website, so it will be available to anyone to watch, <clears throat> and the tool is available um, for anyone to use. Um, and <clears throat> it does see we got one more question in the chat, so we have a little time. What is the vision for integrating badges within the registry? To further learner and employment records instances. Well, <clears throat> the registry is available for um, systems to utilize that data, and that includes learner and employment records. So we already have um, uh, software companies that create learner and employment records using the data in the registry. So that is um, a use case that is already supported. Another good reason to get your badges in the registry. And we can go ahead and go to the next slide. <clears throat> um, if you have any questions about the badge publishing tool, any suggestions for it, or run into any issues with it, feel free to contact our team. We have a general email box for publishing at credentialengine.org that we monitor you know, every business day, um, or you can feel free to contact me um, directly. <clears throat> And since we have time and I see another question that came in, um, let me go ahead and take a look at that. Thank you, Steve. What if I've already published um, my micro-credentials and separately have integration with Canvas? Is there a way to remediate the data in the credential engine to connect with the Canvas credentials published on the badge publisher? If you're saying that you've already published basically what you have, what is um, the equivalent of what is in your uh, included with your Canvas badges, um, <clears throat> then you probably you really don't need to do anything. But if you're saying that your badges are different and you want to link the two, then we would recommend that you go ahead and import your badges and link um, the credentials um, where applicable that you've already published to those badges. If I didn't quite get that right, feel free to unmute. <laughs> so I can better answer your question. <laughs> yeah, I can go into a little bit more detail about that use case. Um, the tool does attempt to merge any data that you already have on the publisher about this credential with new data coming in from the badge system and update that existing record as opposed to uh, creating a new duplicate record. You don't want duplicate records representing the same credential in the, the registry. Right. Um, so in order to make sure the tool connects the right way, all you need to do is make sure that the credential identifier within your existing record is formatted the same way that the tool is going to format um, your next you know, the next tool, one it publishes because that's what it uses to match them together. Um, so you can publish like one test badge, see how that how it does that credential ID, and then go and modify the existing credentials in your publisher system to make sure that they use the um, correct credential ID format. And then the, they will just match up nicely and um, you can use the publisher tool to um, update any alignments or any other data you'd like. Thanks, Nate. That was incredibly helpful. Appreciate it. 
We can include that little tip with our instructions too. So we'll make sure we do that. All right. If there aren't any other questions, again, we want to thank everyone for your interest and participation with today's webinar. We're really looking forward to seeing a lot of badges published to the credential registry. Again, let us know if you have any questions and have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you all.